Hello, hello awesome. It's Regina Adams coming to you on AWE Radio from my ABC, DP, and RM TalkCast. Shh, let's talk about getting it together. I still think there isn't any real current news or political governance going on to report, and the state of our government is in disarray. So I decided to take a different approach lower the bar on news importance and provide news and action happening with our government officials, whether earth shattering or not. Reflections of who we have governing us. Just want to provide a flavor of what is happening in DC and get on with the business at hand. Want to help you know who's on the team, your team or not. Democracy is working in the background of our lives through omission rather than commission. Nothing is getting done to make it better and the things occurring to try to tear it down are ineffectual for the most part. Democratists continue to strive to strengthen the country's democratic principles that small d on a partisan basis mostly in spite of the divisiveness of the right. Not necessarily Democrat, meaning the Democratic Party, big D. Staying strong because the country is stronger together, trying to find common ground, although there is rampant dysfunction and discourse in the ranks of the U.S. government. The it today is democracy, know it, what it is and isn't, and who's on the team. The Articles of the Constitution, Article 5, amending the Constitution. All right, we'll start with a few congressional news topics and then delve into Article 5, time permitting. Uh, we might make this into a two-part series. Okay, notable congressional news. The House GOP continues its obstructionism and interference. It released over 40,000 hours pages of January 6 security footage I mentioned that to you last week, exclusively to Tucker Carlson on Fox News. And we now have proof of our suspicions as evidenced in the release of footage and his, Tucker's, commentary on the subject. The PBS headline reads, Fox News star Tucker Carlson ramps up January 6 lies with footage provided by House Republicans. It states, Handed some 41,000 hours of January 6 security footage, Fox News' Tucker Carlson has launched an impassioned new effort to explain away the deadly capital attack linking the Republican Party ever more closely to pro-45 conspiracy theories about the 2021 riots. The conservative commentator aired the first installment to millions of viewers on his primetime show, working to bend perceptions of the violent, grueling siege that played out for the world to see in a narrative favorable to 45. He promised more for subsequent nights. The undertaking by Fox News comes as 45 is again running for president and executives at the highest levels of the cable news giant have um, admitted in unrelated court proceedings that it spread the former president's false claims about the 2020 election despite dismissing Trump's assertions privately. The effort dovetails with the work of Republicans on Capitol Hill, led by House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who turned over the security footage to Fox. The Republicans are trying to claw back the findings of the House January 6th investigation, which painstakingly documented with testimony and video evidence how 45 rallied his supporters to head to the Capitol and fight like hell as Congress was certifying his loss to Democrat Joe Biden. 45 on Tuesday contended falsely, those are my words, that Carlson presented his presentation was irrefutable evidence that rioters had been wrongly accused of crimes and he thanked the host and the speaker for their work. 
Carlson praised McCarthy as having rectified the official record. 45 called anew for the release from custody of people who have been convicted or have pleaded guilty to charges from the attack. At the same time, criticism poured in from Democrats and some top Republicans as well over the GOP's attempts to amplify falsehoods about the attack that was seen around the world as 45 supporters laid siege to the seat of U.S. democracy. Representative Benny Thompson, the Democrat who chaired the House January 6th committee investigating the riot, called McCarthy's decision to selectively release the security footage a dereliction of duty. Despite repeated warnings as to the sensitive nature of this footage, the speaker decided it was more important to give in to a Fox host who spews lies and propaganda than to protect the Capitol, Thompson said in a statement. He called January 6th one of the darkest days in the history of our democracy. Senator Majority Leader Chuck Schumer called the Monday night Fox News episode from Carlson one of the most shameful hours we have ever seen on television. The show's portrayal was an insult to every single police officer, Schumer said, especially the family of Brian Sicknick, who died later after fighting the mob. Nonviolent? Ask his family. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell said it was a mistake for Fox News to depict the footage as it did, at odds with what he and others witnessed firsthand at the Capitol on January 6th. In the roughly 30-minute segment, Fox distilled the thousands of hours of footage of the gruesome scenes at the Capitol that day and did show some of the hand-to-hand -hand combat as rioters led siege to the building, broke windows, and kicked down doors to gain entry. But Carlson also emphasized imagery of the invaders summoned combat gear and wielding flagpoles, merely milling about the gilded halls, taking pictures of the surrounding during phases in the long hall attack. These were not insurrectionists. They were sightseers, Carlson said. The footage he aired focused on one of the highest profile rioters, Jacob Chansley, the QAnon shaman, grabbed in his horned hat and bare chested. His garb, he poked out around the building, officers standing by and opening doors. Chansley pled guilty to a felony charge of obstructing an official proceeding and was sentenced to 41 months in prison. Carson denounced the January 6th committee led by Democrats in the past Congress and called out 45's chief Republican critics, Liz Claney, Shaney, excuse me, and Adam Kinzinger as liars on the panel. He said most of rioters were not destroying the Capitol. They obviously revered the Capitol. Carlson is reviving the falsehoods launched by 45 and his allies, including Republicans in Congress, that the attackers were peaceful protesters and acted like tourists despite the well-documented carnage of the day and the deaths of five people in the riot and its aftermath. It's part of an effort to reverse criminal charges for those being prosecuted in the attack, many of whom have pled guilty and said they regretted their actions on January 6th. Capitol Police officers were defending against the mob have testified that their harrowing experiences, one said she was slipping in other people's blood, while another told of being crushed in the mob as they worked and ultimately failed to block the rioters from storming the Capitol. Among those who died in the riot and its aftermath were 45 supporter Ashley Babbitt, who was shot by police and Capitol Police Officer Sicknick who died after fighting the mob. Carlson ad foot, aired footage of Sicknick inside the Capitol 
picking up posters and politely ushering protesters out the door, portraying that as evidence the officer was not killed in the crush. That laugh, the fact that he didn't die in being crushed in the Capitol, was denounced by Capitol Police Chief Tom Manger as the most disturbing accusation from last Monday night. The department maintains, as anyone with common sense would, that had Officer Signick not fought violently, valiantly for hours on the day he was violently assaulted, he would not have died the next day, Chief Manger said in a memo to his police force. He said the program cherry-picked from claimer, calmer moments of the day, ignoring the chaos and violence that happened before our door. The Sicknick family said in a statement that the footage simply showed that their brother bravely resumed his duties for a time after he had been attacked by a chemical agent. Ken Sicknick, Brian Sicknick's brother said in an interview that the family is at a loss about how to fight back at a network with millions of viewers and the Speaker of the House who gave access to the footage. Law enforcement failures on the January 6th have been investigated in Congress and acknowledged. Police failed to heed signs of a looming attack and were slow to provide an adequate response, including reinforcement from the National Guard stations nearby. Nearly 1,000 people have been charged by the Justice Department in the siege with members of the extremist Proud Boys and Oath Keepers groups facing rare charges of sedition for their roles at the front of the assault. Several members of the Oath Keepers have been found guilty of sedition. Most of the defendants face lesser misdemeanor charges for having been on hand during the siege. Republicans on Capitol Hill are mounting an effort to retell the history of January 6th through the House Administration Committee, which has opened an online portal for submissions from the public. Some GOP leaders, however, appeared uncomfortable with McCarthy's move and the way the footage was being used. Senate Republican leader McConnell quickly distance himself for the endeavor, saying he wanted to associate myself entirely with the opinion of the chief of the Capitol Police about what happened. That was his quote. McConnell said, clearly the chief of the Capitol Police correctly describes what most of us witnessed firsthand on January 6th. Pressed about January 6th, Senator John Thune of South Dakota, the number two Republican, said it was an attack on the Capitol. The source for this article was PBS NewsHour. Moving on to the second story. In letters first shared with NBC News, senators wrote Walgreens, who had stated they would not sell medical abortion drugs as well as to Albertsons, Costco, Kroger, and Walmart, expressing frustration that they have not said where they stand on selling abortion pills. This is a new NBC News headline, and the headline reads, Senate Democrats press Walgreens and other stores on new medication abortion policy. Nearly 20 Democrat sen senators are calling on Walgreens to provide more detail about the recently announced plans to restrict access to abortion pills in certain states and pressing other major change to make it clear where they stand on the issue. In a letter first shared with NBC News, 17 Senate Democrats asked Walgreens to provide the strongest possible access to the pills and clearly communi communicate its abortion drug policies to customers in the wake of its decision not to sell the pills in several states where abortion is legal and illegal. 
at a time of great confusion about abortion access, your company has done the disservice of adding to it, the senators wrote in the letter led by Patty Murray of Washington and Debbie Stabenow of Michigan. While we are well aware of threatening letters you received with regard to the distribution of malpression in certain states, the response to those pressures was unacceptable and appeared to yield to these threats, ignoring the critical need to ensure patients get this essential health care wherever possible, the senators added. Walgreens announced its decision this month after it came under pressure from a group of Republican attorneys general who said in a letter that it could face legal consequences if it sold abortion medication in their states. The attorneys general sent similar letters to CVS, Rite Aid, Albertsons, Costco, Kroger, and Walmart. Senators said in a statement Tuesday, in no way, shape, or form should businesses deny legal health care to women who have the right to access these vital medications. All businesses should follow the FDA certification process and fully comply with applicable state and federal law. Walgreens spokesman Frazier Egerman responded in a statement saying, we want to be very clear about our position. Has always been Walgreens plans to disperse malprestazone in any jurisdiction where it is legally permissible to do so. Once we are certified by the FDA, we will dispense this medication consistent with federal and state laws. Providing legally approved medication to patients is what pharmacies do and is rooted in our commitment to the communities in which we operate, he added. We intend to respond to the senators. The senators asked Walgreens to reply to their letter by March 21st. Now, California Governor Galvin Newsom, a Democrat, announced last week that the state will not renew its multi-million dollar contract with Walgreens as a result of its new policy. In January, the FDA announced it would broaden the availability of the medication by allowing pharmacies to dispense the pills directly to patients in person or through mail delivery for the first time. Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid announced their plans to sell the drug shortly after the FDI rule, FDA rule change. Medication abortion is how most women across our country get abortion care, and it's absolutely critical patients can access this safe FDA-approved drug without being forced to jump through medically unnecessary hoops or drain their bank accounts to travel hundreds of miles. Murray said in a statement Tuesday. Many of the Democrats who signed the letter to Walgreens also signed on to letters applauding CVS's and Rite Aid's, the end of one, AIDS plans to seek certification to dispense medica medication abortion. They urged the two companies to offer clear guidelines on how they plan to dispense the pills and to not cause further confusion or undue alarm. Senators expressed their frustration in letters to the other businesses and have announced whether their policies are going, to forward, in, going forward include selling abortion pills. The source for this article is NBC News. Next subject or the out of article. The GOP was traditionally aligned with businesses, but an antecedent populist wing is more concerned with punishing businesses than that espouse disfavored ideas. Uh, the NBC News headline reads, 
Conservatives blame Silicon Valley bank collapse on diversity and woke issues. <laughs> As the government races to contain the conservatives are seizing on collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, the rescue as a Biden bailout for a woke bank that caters to Democratic donors in big tech. While the GOP was traditionally aligned with business, its antecedents populist wing seemed more interested in punishing corporations, at least while the party is out of power and doesn't bear responsibility for the fallout. Republicans will likely frame this bankruptcy and subsequent bailout as class warfare. It's East Palestine versus Silicon Valley, said Sam Gudadig, a Republican lobby lobbyist, referring to the site of a recent train crash in Ohio that Republicans accused the Biden administration of ignoring. We can't get into a situation where there's red banks and blue banks, and unfortunately, that's exactly where we are. Gudadig noted, for instance, that Senator Sherrod Brown, Democrat Ohio, the chairman of the banking committee, faces a tough reelection next year. Republican campaign operatives are absolutely going to prosecute the case that Brown gave nothing to East Palestine and everything to Silicon Valley Bank. Bank failures aren't especially uncommon. There have been 565 since 2000 according to the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, typically several every year, even in non-recession times. But Silicon Valley Bank was uniquely positioned to spark a political firestorm given its centrality to the tech sector. And the failure pushes several political hot buttons all at once. Concerns about the power of big tech from both sides of the aisle populist anger at bailouts, battles over corporate cultures that prioritize issues like diversity and the environment, and traditional economic concerns about regulation, government, intervention, spending, and inflation. It's the biggest bank failure since the 2008 financial crisis when government bailouts sparked the right-wing Tea Party re revolt. History President Joe Biden seems to be trying to avoid repeating by this time saying taxpayer dollars won't be used and insisting that those responsible will be held accountable. But Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley still called it a Biden bailout, warning that while a pot of money that banks pay into may cover costs for now, taxpayers would be on the hook if it runs out. Joe Biden is pretending this isn't a bailout. It is, she said. Others argued the failure was a result of President Biden and congressional Democrats' reckless spending. The CEO of Job Creators Network, a conservative business group, put it. While he said, which he said drove up inflation, forcing the Federal Reserve to raise rates, which devalued older U.S. Treasury bonds held by the bank. Still the most vocal early reaction to the bank failure on the right was more concerned with bank culture than balance sheets. They're so concerned with DEI or diversity, equity, and inclusion and politics and all kinds of stuff. I think that really diverted from them focusing on their core mission. Florida Republican Governor Ron DeSantis, a likely candidate for president, said on Fox News Sunday morning's futures. Referring to corporate diversity, equity, and inclusion programs that have become a boogeyman on the right, along with environmental, social, and governance, or ESG investing. Florida's Governor DeSantis last month backed legislation to ban what is called the woke ESG financial scam. 
Silicon Valley Bank's chief risk officer drew particular attention from conservatives because she was involved in an LGBTQ employee group. SVB is what happens when you push a leftist woke ideology and have that take precedence over common sense business practices. 45 Jr. tweeted over a screen grab. House Oversight Committee Chair James Comer of Kentucky was already thinking about a line of inquiry Sunday calling the bank one of the most woke banks on Fox News. Last fall, a new anti-woke bank shut down after it quickly burned through $50 million in capital from major investors like conservative billionaire Peter Thiel. The startup was billed explicitly as an alternate to mainstream banks for conservatives, but it operated for fewer than three months before it shuttered. Talk of more rev regulation, however, worried Senator Kevin Kramer, who called the government's rescue measures too much too fast. He argued that Biden set a dangerous precedence by backstopping 100% of uninsured deposits, sending a signal to all banks that bad behavior will be rewarded. But in the same breath, he also knocked what he said was regulators focus on ESG efforts. The episode should warn regulators to focus on the main mission for financial institutions and that is not climate change or management diversity, he said. It is risk based on financial returns. The source here was NBC News. So we're going to uh, close this segment of the series and we're going to uh, hope that we provided you with something that shows where we are with our governance and some of the issues that are reigning or raging up in DC and we'll come back to you in the second segment and talk about Article 5. So here's Regina signing off saying come back to you in the next segment with something for you to take into next week's Thinking.